everybody it is sunday the 5th of december december the 5th yes sunday december the 5th and all my plans went to pot last night <laughs> i did start a little bit of organizing over here and then i got a message from an email from my accountant and she said i'll need it i'll need your account soon and i thought oh god she's she's had she was double vaccinated i've told you about this before she was double vaccinated but she got covid she runs her own accountancy business and she because we were her first customers she always deals with our accounts separately and um she uh with her having this covid she has i told you she had to go to hospital for oxygen even though she'd had the double vaccine and she said afterwards she said i'm really feeling quite tired so i'm going to go part-time so i won't be able to do everything that people expect me to so i thought oh i'll leave her to it you know, she probably won't want my accounts for at least uh, till january because we'll have to pay the tax at the end of january and so she's come on to yes last night and said when are you going to send me your accounts so, so today i've been trying to get it all finished off and tidied up and it was quite where most of it was done but there were some bits that I had to get finished and so I've spent the whole of this day from about 10 o'clock until at least about half an hour ago which is now it's 10 to 4 so it must have been about 20 past 3 I finally got them done and tomorrow I'll email them across to her but oh god I'm so pleased I've got them over and done with anyway it is vlogmas and I gather a lot of you are enjoying this so I'm pleased about that and um we've got beyond the front beyond the front door beyond the pink door to go this today she's a dup she comes every two days and today is the two day so let's start well we usually start with Kylie in the machine no we'll do Kylie in the machine first so Kylie in the machine number number five which is oh it's a long thin one here number five Kylie in the machine is this long thin one here so I'm going to go like that. Can't get it up. Somebody said that it want somebody said that she watches another person that's got this this uh advent calendar and she uses a stitch and picker to un to undo it. Um I'm posher than her, I've got my big knife. <laughs> uh yeah, oh no, that's oh look at that, it's come away there. Oh no, just coincidence that it's come away it's probably where it's next to the seam um so let's have a look and see what's in are you ready do you want to see i'll let you see first if i can get this paper back what can you see what can you see what can you see oh what is it oh they're long ones these oh no they're not well they're they're fairly long long and thin three of them again so we get them all in threes and this one says fabulous and it's in silver and beige beautiful fabulous you are fabulous fabulous and on the other side you can see how the sparkle can you see the sparkle let me get there sparkle there and it's got catmer on the side there Kylie and the machine, Katma. So we've got three fabulous labels. One, two, three. Now where did I put my... I've got a little bag, box here somewhere. That there. My little bag to put them in. I still can't find day ones. It's somewhere on here. I've got the table fairly clear, so I don't know where they've disappeared to. I'll just have to have a good look. I'm going to do Sherlock. And this one is called Christmas Blackmail. The young Earl of Wax was a pitiful sight to behold, standing there on the doorstep of 221B Baker Street with a look of sheer desperation in his eyes as, his, as he maltreated his hat with nervous fingers. Oh, take my glasses off. As he maltreated, I haven't got a hat on. As he maltreated his hat with nervous fingers. I don't know what to do anymore. My fiance is suffering and she can't sleep. This has to end. I can't keep silent any longer and I count on your discretion. 
Of course, calm down, old chap, and do come in, Watson said in a fatherly manner. What's this all about? Blackmail! Since the beginning of our event, we have been receiving threatening letters on a daily basis. The blackmailers demanding we pay a ransom by Christmas Eve. Otherwise, he'll publish compromising pictures of Iron, my fiance, Miss Iron Iola. She's Irish. A wedding scheduled for December the 30th. My family regarded as an insult that I'm not marrying a noble woman. If they ever found out she's a nude model. Holmes and Watson exchanged glances at each other. Can we see one of the letters? said Holmes. That's one of the problems. Iron burns them. She burns them all. She's determined to destroy the evidence of her lurid past. She keeps begging me to pay the ransom. It's psychological terror. The letters arrive on the doorstep without any warning at different times of the day and without a postmark. Iron hardly dares leave the house. She feels persecuted and is completely hysterical. She must never know that I've come to see you. Have you ever thought of hiding the letters? Watson asked taking pity on the desperate Earl. To spare poor Iron? I did, and the next day the note was gone, taken out of my locked desk. Someone from Iron's past is the blackmailer, and they must have an accomplice in the house. It's hard for me to admit this, but my valet has the only other key to my desk. He's been with me for four months, and came with excellent references just two months after Iron moved in with me. She's been in charge of my household and staff ever since. A very accomplished lady. We are very close. So you suspect your valet, said Sherlock. As an accomplice, yes. It's obvious. He came into the house shortly after Iron. He has the keys for every lock. And he goes to bed late and gets up first in the morning. Iron told me he sidled up to her one evening and said, we don't want scum like you in this house, Miss Iola. I need your help to apprehend the blackmailer. You do indeed, Holmes said. So, who's blackmailing? Is it the butler? Is it... What could it be? I've got some funny... I haven't read this, but I'm wondering if her Iola and, and him are in cahoots. Could be. You never know. We've got to wait till the end to find out. Now then, we go to next one. Oh, what I'm wearing? I am wearing the um, I am wearing the Jelly Yoko. Uh, Yoko top. I've widened the neck a bit, and I had when I went when I went to the um, where no, I, I saw. When I was at the Harrogate Knitting and Stitching Show three years ago, three or four years ago, I came to a stall that had lovely ribbons, lovely tapes like this. And I thought they were nice, so I didn't buy any. So I thought I'd order some online about a month or two later, thinking I was getting some that wide. And of course it came this wide. And I was thinking, well, what am I going to do with that? It's lovely, but I don't know what to do with it. So then I made cuffs out of it. And I had one little piece left, so I made a little badge, which I've... Uh, it's basically zigzagged right round to stop it from fraying. So this is the Jaylee Yoko, complete with uh, rather wide cuffs. <laughs> right, so we have Beyond the Pink Door and it's number three. Is it number three? It's number three. Is it number three? Yes, it's number three because three's there. I don't know how, it should be an even number. It's number three anyway. So, number three. It feels like a something hard, something hard, but it's kind of sticking out here. So let's see what it is. <laughs> Somebody said you get very excited when you open presents. You I get very excited. I don't get many presents, so it's nice to open them. Anyway, oh. This is another one of those Germany things. And, oh, 
This is a needle magnet. Now, what's a needle magnet? It's German. It tells me in English. Or an amour à épingle, which means loving the needles. Loving the needles. Or a needle magnet. Needle magnet means needle magnet. Amour à épingle, liking the needles, I think. Or a pin magnet. And look at it. It's a pussycat one. A pussycat one for putting on there. Now, somebody said, I don't like to put magnets next to my new com my new sewing machine because it might damage, this, damage the, um, the workings of it. So, the thing about this one is, it is on a sucker. Let me just get it off so you can see. One good thing is it's a cat. Well, although I'm more partial to dogs than I am to cats, I've got cats in the household. And look at that. It's a little cat. A little cat magnet. But the thing is, it's on a sucker. So if you're worried about it being next to your machine, it's going to be standing off your machine. So that's quite good. And it's not going to damage your plastic on your machine. I've actually got a few suckers on one of my machines, on my main one. And I'll show you sometime what I do with them all. I've got a few suckers holding things on. And I find them really handy. Um, so this is a sucker magnet. So I'm really pleased with that one. I will be using that especially when it's a pussycat one so it's a it's a um prim it's by prim and it's a sucker magnet and you see they've show you one they show you it stuck on that part of the machine actually there's no computerized workings there so you can put it there so uh that's the beyond the pink door so what are we left with we are left with the little tree house which i have to film in there you, I always put the um, Jackie Lawson one at the start, so you've got that to watch. Kaboodly Oodle 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 Fabrics. And I've tried to put them back in, because I had to get them all out to find yesterday's. I've tried to put them in, all in, so they start at the bottom with 24 and work their way up. But I was missing one. I think I'm missing one. But no, it's not a problem if I am. We'll just go without now. It's day... Yes, it is. The 5th of... December it's another little pouch and inside right it's rounded it's soft and it's kind of goes round like that can you see it through there if I take that can you see it is some beautiful tape robin tape robin petersham type tape let me just get that so you can see there can you see a robin petersham tape and there's a lot there must be at least a a meter a good meter there and it's wrapped in a lovely purple ribbon and the little robins there that is really nice very nice blue with little red robins so that is caboodle caboodle fabrics i'm quite impressed by this i think you do get uh, they do say that a lot of these things you get more than the value of the things that you get in there than than you would pay if you bought them in the shop so that's caboodle there so now we go oh um, i want to show you these things that i got they came yesterday and i said i was going to show you well i've done a couple there was a glitch try again in a few seconds oh she doesn't half get in get in the way doesn't she i bought a pack of 10 of these i think i can't remember how much they were 10 or 13 pounds they're actually shoe boxes for so you can put out um I figured that if they didn't work for what I want them for, I can put my shoes in because I do, I've got all my shoes in shoe boxes, but I can't always see what that what's in there. So I got these, and it's plastic. And basically, the only thing that I'm kind of disappointed in is you have to tap, you have to get to it. Hold on, I bend that in, bend that in, bend that in, bend it out bend that in, bend it out, so that goes onto there, see that piece of plastic, it goes like that, and that holds, hold, holds shut, and then you go in that way, I would have preferred if I could have gone in the top or in, in there, but um, I think it's still going to be usable, now what I've got is lots and lots when I first came back into sewing, I didn't know what a fat quarter was. And I kept thinking, why are they selling pieces of fabric that are a quarter? I looked it up to find out what it was. And I found out it was a quarter of a yard, like a, a 
half a yard cut and a quarter cut in half. And I thought, well, why are they doing that? And then I, at the time, I just thought, oh, well, I'll buy some. <laughs> and I bought some, and I bought some, and I bought some, and I bought some. And I have a lot of fat quarters. All different. And every time I go into shops and I see these little packages, I if, if, the, if the pattern appeals to me, I buy some. Which is why I think next year I'm going to have to do some quilt making. But this is what this looks like in here, you see. I piled them all in there. And they are, uh, we've got um, little little cubby hole ones, cubby hole shelves. And I can stack three of those, one above each other, like that, one on top of the other one. The three will go into the cubby hole. And I can see all the fabrics, I can see what they are. So I thought that was quite nice. The only downside to that is that if I wanted, say I wanted the yellow in the middle, I've got to open one end out and take them all out whereas if it was in a shoe box I could just pull it pull it out I did have them in shoe boxes but I just want to get I'm trying to get a bit more organized because when they're in a shoe box you can't tell what you've got in and somebody did say that they use see-through boxes and I thought well, that's a really good idea because then you can see what you've got and you can start planning a bit better than having to I was spending my time going up on my ladder, looking in the boxes, going down, going up on my ladder, going in the boxes and coming down again. So this way I can see exactly what there is. Um, there are 10 box. I got 10 of these. And so um, three to a, a shelf. I can actually probably get two lots up there. So normally I would have that there like that. And uh, it's a bit disorganized there. I do like those boxes anyway, those heavy ones, those ones there, they're quite good. So I will keep a hold of those and I've had those, I got them from Ikea years ago, probably 20 years ago and I do like them. But this is actually working quite well. The only thing is that that's brought up right to the front and there's actually space behind that. So I could put something else behind it, but I'd have to put a note on something on the shelf or something there or above or down the side just to say what's behind it uh, otherwise I might forget that there's something behind it I've got cottons in there and on the top one I've got felts so I've you know I've got quite a few in there and then I'm busy organizing my shelves I've managed to get down to there that one is looking a bit messy at the side but those are patterns and then those are fabrics with all my PDFs from uh, downloads. That's the one that's got to get sorted yet. That's got to get sorted. <laughs> We come to the solution from Sherlock and the solution is about Christmas blackmail I'm gonna guess that possibly what would I think I think it's possibly that his girlfriend is going to marry him because she wants the money and this butler is a husband or butler's a brother a brother let's see if I'm right <laughs> You were right, Lord Wax. Someone from Miss Iola's past is blackmailing you and there's an accomplice in your house. Your Iron is an accomplished lady, you say. But she has made a far-reaching mistake nonetheless. Burning those blackmail letters was the worst thing she could have done in her situation. She has destroyed vital evidence which would have helped to convict the blackmailer. Those notes are usually full of mistakes or, or unintentional giveaways. Did Miss Iola... He's smoking his pipe there. So. I haven't got a pipe. Did Miss Iola... I've lost my place. <laughs> Did Miss Iola, terrified as she was, stop thinking clearly? Or why else would you do such a thing? I'm afraid not. Your Iron is very clever lady indeed. She knew exactly what she was doing. The valet's remarks are pure slander spread by Miss Iola. All his suspicious characteristics apply to her as well. She, run, she runs your household. How would she not have access to all your keys? And she's in the house round the clock. She can't hardly goes out at all anymore. I'm certain he never threatened her. 
You've been taken in by a con artist, your lordship. I'm sorry to inform you that Miss Iola or Miss No Miss Woo, this is the next bit. I'm sorry to inform you that Miss Iola or Mrs. Norfolk, I should say, is already married. I attended the wedding myself. Her marriage to you would have been annulled immediately if it ever took place at all. But she is far more likely to be planning to spend Christmas with her husband. Hence the ultimatum in the blackmail letter and her name isn't Iron Iola. Watson, you keep a meticulous record of all my previous cases. You must surely recall Irene Adler. The case of the Bohemian heir to the throne. Irene Iola is the Irish version of the name Irene Adler, which so happens to be Mrs Norfolk's maiden name. A person from Iron's past, as it were. The accomplice in your house is none other than she herself. And if everything had gone according to plan, the ransom money would be all hers. But the blackmailer and the marriage swindler would appear to be two different people. The good news is that Iron was never a new model and you won't have to pay the ransom. Well, there you go, it was Iron, and the butler had nothing to do with it. You see, I would have gone and accused that butler and he hadn't anything to do with it. And I've got a pipe. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. That was number five, December the 5th, Sherlock Holmes. And we look forward to seeing... Oh, tomorrow is this called Blind Devotion. Oh, tomorrow... Fingers crossed, tomorrow, well, we woke up this morning, we woke up this morning and I said to him when I went to bed, I said, I can hear dripping. And he's, because the, the roofer didn't come last night and he's definitely coming on Monday, tomorrow. Fingers definitely coming on Monday. <laughs> so, uh, I was lying last night and I said, I can hear drips. And he said, no, it's the drain pipe outside because the, the gutter outside, because the gutter... The, when the roof when the roof tiles came off they knocked the gutter slightly out and so the gutter is dripping onto the conservatory as well and so he said no it's the gutter and I said I'm sure it's not the gutter so anyway this morning he got up and he went and got a shower and I walked around the bedroom and all of a sudden I thought oh I'll go and have a look out the window and see if it's the gutter and I'm looking and I couldn't see any drips coming down and then all of a sudden I backed up and my foot went in a pool of water and so I looked up and there was some water dripping because we had rain last night and that was dripping through the roof and it's obviously coming through the ceiling so I'm thinking oh god no so we then got this went up into the loft started putting buckets here there and everywhere and I was saying and and he put a bucket in one place and I said it's still dripping so we had to put a, more buckets in we had to go and get all sorts of containers to put up there it wasn't raining heavily but it was dripping through and I don't want to have to pay for a new ceiling as well so um so anyway he's done all the it's it's actually where the eaves are like that there's tiles missing along the top so the water's dripping there and there's a couple of tiles on either side of the roof tile on there that's off and I think there's a couple that are cracked so the rain's going down and through the cracks so they've got to be sorted fingers crossed it's going to be tomorrow because the guy says he's going on holiday on Wednesday so we need to get that done anyway so he's coming tomorrow I've also booked for to clean for a carpet cleaner for tomorrow so I've booked a carpet cleaner for tomorrow not a man but a car, we're going to pick up the carpet cleaner and we're going to bring it to us, going to pick it up at Tesco's, come back with it and we're going to clean the carpets for Christmas. Not that anybody's coming, but I've been ba banging on about how dirty they are. So I can't believe, I keep saying, I can't believe there's just you and me in this house and we get these carpets very dirty. We are people who are from the generation where you still walk around in the house with your shoes on. Our children and grandchildren come to the house and they take the shoes off. And I keep saying to him, we should do the same. <laughs> and it's fine. Would I mean I, I would tend not to would tend to be okay until his lordship goes out in the garden. And then I have to keep saying, Get your shoes off the floor, it's coming in much. <laughs> anyway, so 
uh, so we've got the carpet clean we're going to get be cleaning carpets tomorrow and we're going to hopefully fingers crossed the roofer that's going to come and put the roof right and then uh, and then and then what else is happening and I've also got to email my accounts across to the, to the accountant and I've got some orders to do. So there's quite a few things to be busy with, but I'm sure I'll be able to fit in some time to show you the advent calendar. So I'm going to love you and leave you and catch you tomorrow. Bye.